King with AutoFix Pile. Today we are working on a 2018 Nissan Pathfinder. The customer is complaining about having a difficult time filling their vehicle up with gas. The gas pump stops maybe every one dollar or so worth of gas and they have to reset the pump every single time. Uh, we do have a check engine light on. The check engine light is leading us in the direction of the evaporative emission system. So let's go ahead and investigate that a little further to see what we come up with. Peace. So I'm going to be starting this video off with a quick explanation of how basic evaporative emission systems work and moving forward I will be referring to the evaporative emission system as the EVAP system. This explanation will be based off of Nissan's EVAP system, however this type of EVAP system is not exclusive to Nissan. In fact I would say that a good majority of manufacturers use this same exact setup or one that is very similar. Now there are five main components to this particular EVAP system. The first and most obvious component being the fuel tank. This is where the fuel is stored and is designed to allow the fuel vapors, also known as hydrocarbons or HCs, a compound of hydrogen and carbon into the charcoal canister. The second component will be the charcoal canister. This is where the hydrocarbons, also known as fuel vapors, are stored until they are ready to be sent into the intake manifold and be consumed by the engine. The third component is the vent control valve. The vent control valve is a normally closed EVAP system sealing solenoid that is used primarily for testing the EVAP system for leaks. Leaks that will cause harmful fuel vapors and hydrocarbons to be released into the atmosphere. The EPA has determined that fuel vapors assist in the generation of smog and environmental pollutants. The fourth component in the EVAP system which is not pictured and we all know how accurately my pictures depict the actual components, right? No? Well, the fourth component is the fuel tank pressure sensor, also known as the FTP sensor. If you're looking for the PID and scan data, it's often referred to as FTP. This sensor is only there to aid in leaking in the leak testing of the EVAP system. The name of the sensor pretty much tells the story of what the task it performs. When the engine control module or the car's computer determines that it is time to test the EVAP system for leaks, it will do so by sealing the EVAP system, commanding the vent control valve to close and monitor the pressure or vacuum that the FTP sensor sends to the engine control module. Large leaks are usually done based on tank pressure using a calibration from the computer that determines the pressure should be based on well, it determines what the pressure should be based on current fuel level, fuel temperature, and the amount of time it takes to achieve that pressure. When this test passes, the engine control module will move on to the vacuum testing portion of the EVAP system test, which is the small leak test. The vacuum is achieved by opening the purge control valve while the vent control valve remains closed, which allows the engine to pull the EVAP system into a vacuum. The engine control module then closes the purge control valve, completely sealing the EVAP system. The engine control module then monitors the fuel tank pressure sensor and keeps track of the time to see how long it to see how long the EVAP system can retain a certain amount of vacuum over a certain period of time. If the engine control module sees the vacuum drop below a certain threshold sooner than expected based on the signal from the fuel tank pressure sensor, then the engine control module may trigger the check engine light depending on how many times the system has failed the test within a predetermined period of time or drive cycles. The fifth component is the purge volume control valve. The purge control valve is usually duty cycle controlled, which means it turns on and off quickly to control the flow of fuel vapors into the engine. But let's back up just for one second. The purge control valve is the valve that releases the fuel vapors or hydrocarbons that is stored in the, in the charcoal canister into the engine to be used as fuel. This valve, which is a solenoid, is normally closed until the engine control module determines that it is ideal for fuel vapors stored in a charcoal canister to be released into the engine as fuel. This is usually done when the vehicle is at full operating temperature and it might be cruising down a highway, might be idling in a parking lot. But like I mentioned earlier, this valve is duty cycle controlled so as to not release too much fuel vapors too fast causing the vehicle to run rich. One final component that I did not mention earlier and is not pictured in my wonderful diagram is a fuel filler cap also simply known as the gas cap. Its job is to keep the fuel tank sealed and assist in keeping fuel vapors out of the atmosphere. One other thing about the EVAP slash fueling system that I need to mention is that if you are experiencing an issue with filling your gas tank up where the fuel nozzle cuts out prematurely, there is a very good chance that you have an obstruction in the venting section of your EVAP system. 
Just like filling a bottle too quickly with any type of fluid, you need to wait for the atmospheric pressure that's currently inside the bottle or fuel tank in this case to displace. This displacement of atmospheric pressure is done through the charcoal canister and out the vent control valve, hence the name vent control valve. So any obstruction in the vent section of the EVAP system will cause problems with refueling. 2018 Nissan Pathfinder. Customers complaint is that when they fill their car up with gas, the gas pump shuts off prematurely as if the gas tank is full, but the gas tank is not full. So, being that this car is so new, I suspect that it's probably um, something that the customer did. Maybe they hit something and messed up their vent valve or something like that. So let's run it for DTCs and see what we have in the old Consult 3. Alright, so we have a vent control valve and an EVAP very small leak. Let's go into engine. All right, so let's go into work support. We want to smoke test it. Let's just go into active test. And we are going to control the purge volume control valve. No, not the purge. We don't want the purge. We want the vent. There it is, vent volume control valve. That's what we want. The reason we want to start our test at the vent control valve is one, because we have a DTC that explicitly says vent valve. Two, because the customer's symptom is not being able to fill the vehicle with fuel, so if we have a vent control valve that is not venting because it's either stuck closed or restricted somehow, spider webs, then you will experience an issue where the gas pump will stop before the tank is actually full. And three, because the vent valve and charcoal canister is in a place that leaves it a little exposed to roll hazards. Let's start that. Okay. We are at the screen where we need to be to turn it on and off. So let's go and get the um, smoke machine hooked up. I'm gonna turn you guys around like this. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna get the smoke machine hooked up. Right there, we're gonna hook it up. I'm gonna take this thing out. I'm not gonna use the service port because I don't know where the hell that adapter is for the smoke machine. This side here. Yeah, I'm not gonna connect it there because I don't know where the adapter is for the smoke machine to hook it up to that. Plus, I get to check and make sure that that's not leaking. Right, so we wanna unhook that and hook the smoke machine up there. Like I said, this side goes to the engine, to the intake manifold. This side here goes to the gas tank. So we're gonna hook our smoke up on that side. That means there's no leaks. All right, so let's test. Do some testing. Walk 
I don't know if you guys can see, but it's smoking. So let me hook that back up. Smoke still coming out. All right, so what we're gonna do is turn that valve on and off with the consult and see if we have a power signal and see if we can get smoke to stop coming out. I suspected that valve was probably not working. I took it out earlier just to see if there was anything obvious and it looked like there was some damage. So let's just see if we have a power signal going to that. We can already see smoke coming out and that's normal. It should be smoking right now because that's in a normally open position. When the car is running, it's normally open. It only closes up the run system test. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is, um, yeah, let's get to school. Anyway, you can see the red trace. That's channel one. That's what we're gonna hook up the um the uh, evap thingy, vent valve to channel one. All right, you can see we got a little something there that tells me that we are connected. We are touching some wire because I can see a little a little bit of noise on the signal. All right, so let's activate. Turn it on and off. That's on. That's off. All right, so let's see if our smoke goes away when we turn it on and off. Right now we are still off. So let's get you guys back on to the thing. All right, so you can see the smoke coming out, maybe. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not. Hopefully it is. You can still see the smoke coming out. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna turn it on, actually, and close it up. And smoke is still coming out. It's on, because I can see that it turned on on the scope. Let me go to the scope and show you that it's on. See, it's on. And we still got smoke. All right, so that thing is bad. We can see that we have power going to it. I can check it with the test light just to make sure that um, it's not an issue with corrosion in the wire somewhere where there's only one strand holding on and we still got a power signal. But I'm pretty confident that that solenoid is no good because it looks like somebody hit it and it's damaged. And you can hear it sometimes when you cycle it on and off, you can hear it move. So I don't think we have an issue with wiring. So what I want to do right now is just go ahead and swap that solenoid out. We have it in stock because it's a high failure rate. Shouldn't be failing on in 2018, but anyway. Let's go. All right, let me turn it off. All right, so let's change it out. Still got smoke, so now let's close it. You can actually hear it, but and the smoke went away. So I say that's a fix. Now the customer's complaint of not being able to fill the car with gas is I believe that that valve was sometimes sticking in the closed position because when you look inside, you can see it actually getting stuck sometimes. That valve right there. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully it ain't too blown out. But that seat would get stuck sometimes and um, it wouldn't work right. So that's that. Yup, see the smoke is gone, the valve is on, everything's working. That's a fix. The only thing we're gonna do now is blow this hose out right here just to make sure there's nothing in here. Blow a little bit of air to it just to make sure it's not clogged. And then we can ship this car. Auto fix. Team with all fixed crowd. Thanks for watching. Peace.